this time on Past Deadline. We begin with this week's news in 60 seconds. Then I'll be talking to sports reporter and podcaster Mitch Vosberg about men's basketball coach Keno Davis's removal. I'm your host, the other Ben, Ben Jodway, and this is Past Deadline, your behind-the-scenes look at Central Michigan life. Here's this week's news in 60 seconds. One of CMU's residential restaurants, Fresh Food Company, is closed due to a COVID-19 case on staff. Workers there are currently quarantining during contact tracing. This comes as CMU is experiencing its highest surge in cases this semester. As of Thursday, 49 new cases were reported. According to the New York Times, Mount Pleasant has the fastest rising case count in the country. SGA's new executive board was announced over the weekend. Caitlin King will be serving as SGA's president, Dylan Baker as vice president, and Olivia Schwartz as treasurer. The inauguration will be on Monday, August 12th. Residence halls are coping with a decrease in socialization within the dorms. Yes, they're still trying to build community and form connections between students. Staff reporter Addie Wachter details how in her story. Read all these stories and more at cm-life.com. That was this week's news in 60 seconds. Next up, we talk with Mitch Vosberg about Keno Davis's removal. All right, Mr. Vosberg, thank you for coming here on Past Deadline. Uh, I know you're, uh, you you help with uh, the other Stadium Life pro- podcast on Sportsmanlike Conduct, which is sports-related. So thank you for coming on here because I know we have big sports news uh, that just happened recently. Um, Keno Davis. So can you just get a lo- lowdown on what happened? Well, first of all, Ben, it's an honor to be on this program with you today here. Um, yeah, basically, um, after nine seasons, Central Michigan uh, has parted ways with uh, – Men's head basketball coach Keno Davis. Um, his final record was 142 143, not a great MAC record. Um, a move that's probably a little surprising, but that's kind of just a bit. Um, this is be the first new hire for the new AD, so uh, kind of interesting times here for the uh, men's basketball program. Yeah, for sure. So, how long has Davis been on the program as a so coach? This, so, he just finished his ninth season at CMU. Um, yeah, I know he spent a year at Drake, spent three years at Providence, took a year off, and wound up here at CMU for the past nine. Wow, okay. So so why is it surprising that he was just suddenly fired like this? Well, there's a lot of things that kind of caught me off guard. One uh, was his contract, which we got through the Freedom of Information Act. It stated there was extension he got with Michael Alford, the AD at the time, that his that uh, what caused for his termination could not be his win loss record, which means the team's record could be as bad as it can be. He could not win a game. That could not have been a reason he was removed from his duties. But with that though, came a buyout. Uh, because we are now in a cycle from April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022, that buyout went down to four hundred thousand dollars instead of five hundred thousand, which would have been if he would have gotten relieved of his duties between, well, before April 1st of this year. But the biggest thing that caught me off guard was kind of the timing. And I, to be honest, like, I understand all the fans, what they say about the interrupt on high and Keno. I understand it. This season was not a lot of fun. Um, because of the COVID-19 restrictions, there was no real off-season workout to be had. Uh, they returned six guys from a roster last season. I had 15, so a lot of turnover. Uh, the assistant coaching staff was in their second or third full season on the staff. Uh, so you add all that together. Then you have injuries now to, uh, like for Andre Polk, who was uh, first team All-Mac freshman this year. He missed basically the entire conference schedule, except for maybe two games. Uh, they had a 17-day COVID, uh, COVID outbreak pause, which to my knowledge is the only CMU program to have a COVID-19 pause for 17 days. Uh, they lost two other starters to injuries. They played the last five, six games with nine, maybe eight guys. So for me personally, I thought with Coach Davis that, you know, I think the seat was getting warm. I didn't think he'd get booted. But I think I understand where Amy Fullen, our now athletic director, kind of wants the men's program to be. 
uh, what the cause was for his termination, for his buyout. I still don't 100% know. We're still trying to figure it out to, to now. I'm not going to speculate on anything because I think that would be very unprofessional of me to say what I think instead of I don't know. So I was caught off guard with the timing, but I totally understand that you know the program kind of has been on a slight decline the past few seasons. So it's just going to be uh, very intriguing to see who takes the reins from here. Okay, so uh, what you said something about like Amy Fallon, who's the current athletic director's vision. Do you know what that vision is for athletic programs here? <sighs> to be totally honest with you, I don't. I, I haven't had a lot of interaction with her, so I don't know exactly uh, what she is. What I can say though, and I feel this, uh, she does. She did come from the University of Texas athletic department. And there's honestly maybe a handful of flag programs, maybe even professional sports programs in the in the world that have higher standards than Texas. So I feel with her first hire she has to make a statement, I feel like this could be a, a name that we as fans aren't thinking. But when you know, it's all said and done, like it could be a big hire. Like this could be a similar hire to when Jim McElwain came in because of his relationship with Michael Alford when they were at Alabama together. Who Fullen brings in, I don't know. I don't know what the outside hiring company that's helping out with the process has in mind. But I think when you question about the vision for the athletic program, I think this hire is going to show a lot of what she wants to accomplish. Because she's been in environments where it's super competitive. You know, it's very high stakes. You know, it's the elite of the elite. Like, maybe the only programs in the nation that have higher standards. I mean, the top five in no particular order would probably be Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, Florida, and Stanford from athletics from top to bottom as your big power, big power five, just higher expectations to compete and everything. So I feel to that regard, that's kind of where I feel her hire is going to go. It's going to be somewhere where this men's program can be competitive again. But I could be totally wrong. I have no clue. Only time will tell for this. Okay, so it sounds like what Amy, who Amy Fullen will hire might be the defining move of like her future at CMU. I wouldn't say the defining move, but I think it shows, like, I think it will show probably the best. It's definitely going to show, I think, what she wants out of the athletic department as, in general. Like, we have some very good coaches here that have been long-term. Like, Tom Brady has been here over 30 years, does things the right way. Uh, Mike Gollick is another real good guy, I think, if it comes to mind, does things the right way. Um, Heather Alstley, who replaced Sue, the legendary Sue Guevara, you know, has taken the program and kept it to where it's at. Um what happens with this men's program, I still don't know. That's the one thing I wish I had the answer for. I really, really do. But for this hire, I feel we're, I feel we're going to see this. I wouldn't say it's going to fight Amy Fullen's legacy, but it's going to set the tone for what I think her vision for CMU Athletics is going to be. Okay, awesome. So back to Keno Davis's uh, firing. Now, what was? how did fans react to that? Um, a lot of alumni, I think... I think, honestly, the timing caught them off guard more than the actual firing did. I think some fans kind of knew the past three, four years, like, you know, I think they kind of, I'm not going to say turn their back on him, but I want to say, like, they kind of knew, they kind of see the ring the wall that they, they kind of knew that he wasn't the guy for the future. Um, to an extent, I disagree with that, but I understand why they thought that. Um but no, the timing is what I think caught people off, well, caught people off guard. Because like I mentioned earlier, with everything that happened this season, I we I think ultimately one more year would have happened. But obviously it wasn't the case. But I don't think anyone was like, mega surprised that we're looking for a new men's basketball coach at this point. I think the fact that it's happened now is what's catching people more off guard. Yeah, and like you were saying earlier, it sounds like there's a lot of like more freshman players in, in men's basketball right now because of that turnover, right? Am I getting that right? Uh, this is true, but if you see me, it's not quite the case. Um, okay. I also mentioned this in another article I wrote. Um, transfer students are becoming more and more of a common trend in college basketball, and especially in Mid American Conference. Uh, if you go back to the 2016 17 season, I think they're back 15 16, past five years, there may be a total of like 42 transfer players from the junior college, NAIA, or, or other collegiate level. A total in the Mid-American Conference. This year, that number was close to 90. So the number of transfer players you were seeing in 
not just not just a CMU, because CMU is a big school for that, but just in general is something boosting, which to me that's just interesting because I hit hard on the, on the junior college level because the 18-19 season, Larry Austin Jr. came in for Vanderbilt for a grad transfer. Sean Roundtree Jr. was finishing his second year from middle area. Then you add about four or five other JUCO players. The difference is with junior college as opposed to guys from high school. For high school, you come in as a freshman, you leave as a senior, maybe get a redshirt year. You spend four or five years in a system. Mm-hmm. For junior college players, you spend two years in a junior college. You go to a Division One program. Maybe you get you get two years, maybe three if you get redshirted. But it's just a different way of developing. It's a different way of assembling a roster. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, I can't bash junior college players because I personally am a junior college transfer. So <laughs> I'm not going to bash that route at all. I totally understand the route, why it makes sense. But I think for me personally, there's a difference when you bring in guys for two years as opposed to four because your turnover is just – it hits faster, it hits sooner. That chemistry isn't built for quite as long. So, yeah, I'll kind of question thing about freshmen. It's just – with CMU, it's not quite as much the case anymore with Keno Davis and the staff. Maybe now this new coach, we start to see that more. But okay, we'll see how that goes. Okay, did players give any reaction to, to uh, Keno Davis's fl- uh, firing? Um, I did talk to two former players. Um, I did talk to David DeLeo uh, when he was in Spain. Um, he has a very good relationship with uh, Dave, with the uh, Keno Davis and his family, dating back to when Ozzy he was just a little guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was surprised, but he understood. He understands that you know the administration has a job to do too. So, there's that. Okay. I talked to one other player, and he didn't see it coming. Uh, but he's now in the transfer portal. So, um, other the roster, you know. I know, I know the guys that were there wanted to play for Keno, wanted to play at the Division One level. Um, the last time we had the coach changeover uh, from the roster that you before, only four guys stayed. Uh, I anticipate that probably more guys will stay this time around as opposed to 2012. But the initial roster reaction, I think it'll vary from player to player, and I think you have to ask them personally. And unfortunately, with the limits I have in trying to talk to athletes, I'm not really able to try to figure that all out. Okay. So I guess just to like contextualize everything, what has been like the history of CMU men's basketball in a nutshell? So I mentioned this in this article too. So since 1979, that season, there's back-to-back really good seasons. Since then, there have been 10 seasons where we've been at least 500. I mean, you've seen win at least half your games. Keno Davis has had five of them in nine years. So... From 79 to now 2021, there's been 10. And five have been in the nine-year window. I think you can piece together what 1979 to 2012 was like. It's been very inconsistent. The Green American Conference record all-time is right about 400 winning percentage. So, obviously, the men's basketball program, I mean, I'll just be flat honest here. Not, It's not what we're known for. Baseball program is terrific. Football program I'd say the past 15 years has been good. Women's basketball program's been great. Wrestling's been great. Men's basketball program is just not what Central Michigan is known for. And I feel with the with what Amy Fullman can do, I feel that can change. Whether that will change or not is to be seen. But just going off the history, it's not been a, it's not been a, a not that much program. It's not even probably one of our top five best athletic programs. And it's a tier A program. For, for an athletic department. So, honestly, CMU men's basketball, it's been hit or miss, and there's been more misses than hits. Okay. Well, I think that's a good note to end it, to end it on. Thank you so much for coming on to here, Mitch. Um, if you want to hear more about sports, please go listen to Unsportsmanlike Conduct. It's a great uh, CM Life podcast. You can find it on our website, wherever you find past deadline. So, yeah. And also, if you want to keep following sports, you can follow me at Twitter at Real Mitch Weber. You can follow us all on at, C- at CM Life Sports. Um, but Ben, thank you again for bringing me on, man. I really do appreciate this. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one, man. Hey, you too. Appreciate it, man. You've been listening to Past Deadline. 
a production of the CM Life Podcast Division. Every story referenced in this episode can be found at our website, cm-life.com. To keep up with us, follow us on social media at Central Michigan Life on Instagram, at CM Life on Twitter, or like and follow Central Michigan Life Facebook page. I've been your host, the other Ben Ben Jodway, and this has been Past Deadline. Until next week, so long and stay informed.